In this video, we're going to continue on from where we left off in the Astro Pixel processor and uh, the basic RGB integration. So if we go to File, Open, and go to our output directory from the Astro Pixel processor, we can load up the three light pollution and um, corrected uh, integration frames for red, green, and blue. By default, PixInsight uh, loads up files unstretched. To stretch them, we need to do a, a screen transfer. This little button up here with a little display on it and a little nuke icon. If we click on that, that's going to stretch the images. A shortcut is on a Mac to do Command A or Control A on Windows. This stage, I'm going to just rename these images. So to rename, you double click on the tab up on the left hand side. So the first tab in your image is the full image, the main image. You rename each to something simpler. In this case, blue. For the blue channel, double click again. Green for the green channel. And red for the red channel. The first thing we want to do is uh, remove these stacking artifacts that we have around the edges of our image. So to do that, we're going to run dynamic crop. So go to processes, all processes, dynamic crop. And whatever image we have as our highlighted image, we're going to hit this reset button, reset button over on the right hand side here. And then this pushes or puts a rectangle around uh, the image, the full image. And what we're going to do is go to the edges and drag those in. So I'm holding down the mouse button, that mouse button, and just dragging those edges in just to remove, as I say, the stacking artifacts. So something like that looks good. Now, what we want to do is we want to apply this dynamic crop to all of the images equally. So we now need to drag this dynamic crop that we've defined to the other two images. Let's do that by dragging the little triangle on the left hand side. We then drag this little triangle here down to this image. And then we apply it, which will apply to that first image. Okay. resized this image to get all the images lined up to the same I'm just going to tidy up we can drag this tab over here with the little arrow so this image is now the same on the same scale so we can have a look and see and they look like they're nicely aligned same for the green this little arrow down here and then just kind of double check make sure everything looks good yeah that's looking good the next thing we want to do is uh, combine the data into an RGB image. So at the moment, these are grayscale images of the red, green, and blue channels. We want to combine them into uh, an RGB image. To do that, we go to channels, sorry, we go to processes, all processes, uh, channel combination. And to combine the channels, we want red, green, and blue. We need to use the identifier for each of these images. That we have renamed. So it should be relatively easy to just go red, green, and blue, and click the little circle. And then this is again linear data, so it's unstretched. So we do a command A or control A on Windows to stretch it. So we have a, an RGB image. So the next thing uh, I typically like to do is neutralize the background. The background has a slight color cast to it. There's a slight red slash green color cast. So let's tidy up these processes. And we're going to go to processes, all processes, background neutralization. 
So what this tool does is, let's just reset it. Uh, what this tool does is uh, it's going to look at the background of what we define as the upper and lower limits in our image. And we'll set those to represent what the background is. And it, it's going to try and rebalance the red, green, and blue channels so that the background is neutral, or it's a neutral gray color. So to find out what your ranges are for your background, if you just hold down the mouse button inside your image, it will pop up a little magnifying glass of that image. So if we scroll around and we have a look at the values for the red, green, and blue, and what is background, you see there that 0 0.018 0 0.018 is roughly you know, a little look up here. 0 0.018 is a rough upper limit. So maybe 0 0.019 is what we need to define or want to define as our upper limit here. So 0 0.019. Type that in here. And what this will do is it's only going to look at values that are between 0 and 0 0.019. So that's our background. And it's not going to include. Um, any of the nebulosity around the galaxy or the stars. So if we take our little triangle and drag that over to our image and apply it, and then we stretch again. So command A or control the needles. And that's looking a little bit better. So the next thing we want to do um, is stretch our data. So the, the data is still linear. We have applied a screen stretch to the image, but that was just temporary stretch so that we could see the data. Now we want to stretch it permanently. There's a couple of ways of doing that, but I think to keep things simple and without having to depend on any uh, scripts that we write, any third party scripts, uh, we're just going to use processes that exist within Bits Inside itself. So we're going to use the histogram transformation tool to do this. So if we go to histogram transformation, and we reset this, we click on the tick. So this is going to apply this histogram transformation process to our, our top image. So whichever image is selected here, so we tick that. And you'll see here in the drop down, we have image 04, which is the identifier for this image. So we're going to click on preview here. So some of the processes in Fix Insight have a real-time preview to help us. Uh, histogram transformation has one. So we click on this. We can see in real time any changes that we're making. Now you'll see the histogram here. Uh, everything's over on that left-hand side. To do the histogram transformation, we need to turn off the screen stretch, the temporary screen stretch. To do that, this little icon up here. These are our screen stretch uh, icons. Uh, first one here can toggle on or off the screen stretch. So we can turn it off by clicking this little display icon. And everything goes back into linear, and we can't see anything. But that's what we want. We now want to stretch. So this middle triangle here is our mid-tone stretch. So we want to drag that over towards the left, and you'll see we're generating a curve here. And we'll gradually see our data being moved in. So I think that's the first good initial stretch. I typically like to do two or three stretches. This little triangle we can um, here, uh, we could drag that up to the image here, or we can just hit the little uh, square, which is just apply it to that topmost window. This will look a little overstretched now because what's happened is we now have applied the same stretch again in our preview. So if we reset this back, this is what we've just applied, and now we want to stretch again. So we drag this little midtone stretch all the way over again. And we'll see now we're getting this histogram moved over from the left hand side. So this, when we stretch it up to here, it's pretty good. We'll apply that. And again, in the preview, to apply the same thing again. So we need to reset. So this is where we are at the moment. 
And then this one, uh, the third one, typically just a very light stretch, but then I'm going to do a levels and drag the left triangle over. And this just brings that whole histogram back over to the left. And I typically want something about here, which as my first kind of stretch. It's a very light stretch. We still have some nice colors in the stars, and what we've, we've revealed that galaxy. And this is a good point to stop. We'll just apply that. And we'll close down our preview. And now we have an image which is looking pretty good so far. And we'll close down these processes. So the next tool I like to use is a curves transformation. So this allows us to introduce a little bit more contrast and to darken the background a little bit. And then, as I say, to enhance the galaxy and just provide a little bit more contrast between the galaxy and the background. So we go to processes, all processes, curves transformation. If you reset that, click on the little tick to associate this process with the top level window. Then go to RGB and slash K, um, we can now apply a little bit of a stretch or we want to turn on the return preview. <coughs> and just apply a little bit of a stretch. And you'll see this is going to bring the galaxy out, but then we want to drag the background down. And this, this little S curve that we're producing, which looks like a little S here, is what we want to, to, to uh, apply that little bit of a contrast. It's a bit of give and take, so what we're doing here is we're removing a bit of contrast from that dark background and we're giving it to this mid-tone along here. Uh, it looks nice there. So you really have to kind of play with these uh, and bring that background. We don't want the background to get too dark. Maybe something like that is nice. Uh, and at this stage as well, we can go to the saturation, which is the one at the end here and just give a little bit of a saturation boost. If they go too far, if you go too far, you end up going crazy like that, but just a little bit of saturation to, to enhance the colors just a little bit. And that looks pretty good there. So I'm gonna apply that, and it's good to me. So here we are. Uh, this is good enough, I think, to upload to social media and share with everybody. In Subsequent videos will go into a bit, little bit more uh, in depth on the processes that we've used uh, and introduce other processes as well. I think if we have a look at the data, it's a little bit noisy. We have not used the luminance data that I have, which is you know, typically would remove a lot of that noise. Um, but it's looking really nice uh, as is with just those couple of steps and a couple of processes that we've, we've applied to the data. I think, as I say, this is good enough to share. So the last thing I want to do is just resize the image. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's about 6,000 by 4,000. So it's a little bit big um, to share on, on Facebook or Instagram. So to resize, we go to processes, all processes, and there's uh, an integer resample. There you go. And uh, by a factor of two is reasonable enough. It brings it down from 6,000 by 4,000 to 3,000 by 2,000. So if we drag that over, to resample, go, resize, and then we can just save. So file, save as, give it a name, m33.png, and save. All right. There we go. I hope you enjoyed the video.